In this video, we are going to learn some basic terminology that is commonly used in social network analysis. We are also going to learn some basic concepts of network structure. And finally, we are going to discuss different data sources that can be used to construct social networks on which we can eventually apply network analysis. So let's get started. The first element of any social network is actors. Actors can represent, for example, email addresses of the students of a class you are currently teaching. Those actors are represented as nodes in a graph that is modeling a social network. The next element of any social network is relations. Those relations are connections that are built between nodes in your social network. For example, those elements can be email exchange between students in the class you are teaching, or those relationships can represent tweets that students exchange in your class. In some cases, you may not be so much interested in the direction of the emails sent between students, but rather that you are just interested in who is talking to whom. In those cases, graphs can be undirected. In other cases, you may be quite interested in the volume of those uh, emails and exchange between students. For example, not every student is discussing in the same way and in the same extent with everybody else in the class. In those cases, relations can have weights based on which you can then analyze the graphs. Final element and the characteristic of the relationships is also direction. Graphs can be directed. For example, you might be interested who is a sender of a particular email in a graph and who is a recipient. Given that those different uh, directions or relationships can also direct the type of influence certain students may have in class, then it is very important that in some situations we are analyzing networks as directed. The final then item that is of relevance for relations in any social network is what those relations can represent. Well, in particular, they represent, for example, friendship relationships between students of the class that you are currently teaching. But they can also represent advice networks, that is to say, from whom in the class students may take an advice for some lessons or some assignments. In other cases, you may be also interested who is annoying to whom in particular class, because those types of hindrance networks may also be very reflective of different types of tensions that may emerge in a class. Of course, we can also use many different other elements for representing relations in social network analysis. So for example, who is talking to whom on Twitter could be one of the commonly used relationships types. Other could be, for example, which students took class together. Let us now switch to the, our attention to the network representation. So given that we identify that networks consist of nodes and relationships, then we can then see that we need to have some way to enter our data so that those data can eventually be imported into some tools. And then eventually we need to perform social network analysis. In this case, we can see one of the simplest ways for representation of social networks in a spreadsheet. In a spreadsheet, all you need to do is to enter all the nodes of your network. In this case, we have a very simple example of a network with four nodes A, B, C and D. And then for each relationship, in this case directed relationships, we need to enter separate rows. So for example, if, have, if we have an edge from uh, A to B, then we will write in column A uh, letter or label A and in letter in the column B we are going to enter label B. Of course weights can also be represented in this particular format so for example by simply replicating those weights as many times as we want to emphasize their weight. There are of course even more formal ways for network representation. The other one more formal way is to use the form of matrix. In this case, we can see a matrix that is also used for representation of the same example. 
This form of representation is used by some tools, such as Node Excel. And of course, mathematicians, they love to use that form of representation, given that it's best reflecting the mathematical structures that are eventually used for implementation of different types of algorithms used for social network analysis. Final element of any social network is the way how we are going to collect and construct our social networks. Historically, social networks are based on self-reported data. Typically, those self-reports are constructed in such a way that you would, for example, go in a class and ask the students of that class who they are typically talking to when they are asking and seeking some advice. In other cases, that can be done by inter in interviewing instructors that are teaching different classes and then with whom they are sharing different teaching practices. More recently, we are using and depending on more electronic types of data. We already mentioned the email example. We can use different types of emails exchanged between individuals we are talking to and those emails eventually then they can be analyzed in terms of different types of social networks we are engage engaging into. On this slide, you can also see a URL to a video which is explaining how to analyze your own social network emerging from your own uh, email history by using the tool Gephi that is introduced in this course. In other cases, we can build social networks based on interaction on different social media, such as Facebook or Twitter. For example, on Twitter, we can extract different types of networks based on the relationships, who is following whom, or who is retweeting, favoriting, and replying to whose other types of messages. And finally, we can also use hashtags as references and the ways how we are establishing certain types of relationships. More recently, researchers in the field of learning analytics started developing tools that can assist them in the extraction of social networks out of the data collected by the contemporary learning management systems, such as Moodle, Blackboard, and desire to learn In those efforts, they were primarily focusing on the data coming out of online discussion boards. In those social relationships, they focus on the extraction on directed social networks in the way by looking who answered questions to whom. And in that way, they were able to produce data in the format that can eventually be analyzed in tools such as Gephi or Node Excel and eventually perform social network analysis. Another way of data collection in social network analysis to be used in education and learning research is related to the way how students are enrolling in classes. For example, in our recent study, we looked at a group of students for 10 years who were enrolling into a single uh, master's degree program uh, at an online Canadian institution. In this particular case, we created undirected graphs between students by simply means of enrolling of students into the same course at the same time. Based on that, we were able to analyze relationships between students and the effects of those relationships on their academic achievement. We are going to cover these and many other examples throughout the course and we are looking forward to continue our conversation now on to the specific types of social network analysis.